KTAR News, Newsmaker. Yeah, and Congressman Gallego was in Ukraine just a couple of months ago when he led a congressional delegation there. Joins us now on Arizona's Morning News to talk about what has become a really full-blown invasion of that country by Russia overnight. Congressman, uh, thanks for taking time with us this morning. I'd imagine you made some acquaintances while you were there in Ukraine. Have you spoken to any of them since the invasion started? And if so, what are they telling you? Uh, unfortunately, I have not been able to talk to many of the people that I talked to, both that were in the military and part of uh, parliament. Um, you know, hopefully it's because they are safe and they're trying to keep safe and they know to stay off their phones because I'm sure they're being tracked. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, you know as much as I know from, from what you're seeing, at least TV. Uh, is there any one particular Ukrainian who's really on your mind this morning? Uh, yeah, there's two of them actually. And I just rather not say their names because I, I don't want them targeted. I appreciate. Yeah, I appreciate you thinking that way. Uh, cause as you said, they could be tracked and, and this is, uh, Putin, as we were told, really attacking democracy. He hates the idea of democracy. So what, what should our response to this be as a member of the armed services committee and as a former combat Marine, do you think American troops should become directly involved? And have you heard anybody else in Congress suggest this? No, at this point, I don't think troops should be directly involved. I mean, we've never made an argument to the American public that we uh, should be sending our troops to to die for a country that we have no treaty obligation with. But we do have a moral obligation to uphold, and that's that we should not allow autocratic countries to attack democratic countries. So what we should be doing is giving the Ukrainian military intelligence so they know where the Russians are and where to shoot at them. We should be giving all the type of lethal aid, which is, you know, I'm talking javelin missiles, stingers, any type of weaponry to basically to allow the Ukrainians what they, to do what they should be doing is killing as many Russians as possible. Uh, and then on the other front, we should make sure that we're basically destroying the Russian economy to the point where they have to buckle and give in. Those are the two things we really should be doing. We need to do it at, as a united front, not just the United States, but all of our allies all around the world. I have to say, uh, listening to your answer to that, you sound very angry and very passionate about this. We should, as Americans, we should be angry and we should be passionate about this. It's not a democratic issue. It's not a Republican issue. This is a bully. This is an autocratic country. It, they are attacking a country that, that wants to be free, that it, you know, has paid its price to be free. Uh, and the fact that people, I think, are just going around and thinking this is something that's normal. It's not. It's disgusting. We should not allow this to happen. And Russia should should really pay the price for this. We're, we're talking with Arizona Congressman Ruben Gallego about the situation in Ukraine. Uh, Russia has fully invaded that country now, it appears. Should we move more of our troops? You said we should not be directly involved. But should we move more of our troops into NATO countries that are closer to Ukraine? Or do you think that that runs the risk of giving Putin more reasons to whine about NATO and or heighten the chances? of the, the U.S. getting directly involved? Well, I think we shouldn't stop worrying about what, you know, what Putin whines about. He's going to whine about everything, especially, I mean, Russian politicians, they, they care about two things, vodka and whining. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we need to keep, you know, moving beyond that, right? Yeah. So number two, what most important thing we should do is reassure our, our allies. Uh, we have a treaty obligation with our NATO allies. These are people that we've trained with. These are people that went to war in Afghanistan for us. So certainly, you know, where there is areas that we can uh, enforce, uh, you know, with troops, we should do it. Uh, But not more than we have to, just because, you know, there's no reason reason for overkill. Yesterday, former CIA station chief Daniel Hoffman, who spent time in Russia, told uh, Jamie and me that we should have been working on a solution to the crisis much sooner. This is something we should have anticipated. Russia's had troops on the border of Ukraine, 70,000 last April. Uh, so we should have been wargaming how we were going to uh, force Putin to withdraw those troops in massive violation of the U.N. charter. We never did that, and we're paying the consequences right now. D- do you agree with him, Congressman? I actually think we should have started even earlier than that. I mean, we need to go back to the Bush, Obama, and Trump era, where I think really we dropped the ball uh, in terms of dealing with Russia. I think we were we thought Russia was going to be somewhat more like us when Russia in itself was actually always going to be the way it was in this kind of manner. It was a country that's always said, has felt subservience. It's a country that has a, a chip on its shoulder, uh, and the only way it knows you know that it still has status in the world is by picking on smaller countries. Uh, you know, at least when I got there in December, I think it, nothing was 100 percent when I was there doing an inspection uh, in Ukraine, both of the Ukraine military as well as our assets. Uh, I think we've really moved fast. I think uh, we've done the right things in terms of building a coalition. But from what I see right now, it seems like Putin's intent, no matter what, was always to invade. Uh, it looks like he's more of a madman than a strategist at this point in, 
it is hard to predict what man men went uh, want. Uh, and this is why the only real solution is to help Ukraine, you know, arm themselves, fight the Russians and just plainly just kill as many Russians as possible. We are going to hear from uh, President Biden a little later on. We'll carry it live here on KTAR. But if uh, it, so, we'll be listening to the president. But if the president was listening to you, what what would you tell him you think we should do today immediately against Russia? I think what we need to do is we need to make it very clear to Russia that the sanctions will continue until uh, they leave uh, Ukraine. Russia hopes that the West uh, you know, loses attention and cares more about the American dollar than they care about Ukrainian uh, lives or democracy. I think we also have to tell and be very clear with uh, Russia that we're going to continue to support Ukrainian resistance uh, until they leave Russia. This is not going to end uh, you know, with the, you know, with you know the, the the passing of flags, as long as there's one Ukrainian willing to fight, we're always going to arm them because we should always be arming democracy against again autocracies. All right, uh, thanks again, Congressman Ruben Gallego of Arizona. He's a member of the Armed Services Committee and was in Ukraine as part of a congressional delegation just a couple of months ago. And we'll have more on Russia's invasion of Ukraine, what it means for us here in Arizona and the United States coming up on Arizona's Morning News.